Yeah. Um, what I have to do better too is some find a way to better coordinate practice of the Kung Fu, Chin Yi, and Tai Chi. I'll go to the school early. Oh. And it's like, I'm going to practice the Tai Chi now. Oh, I better practice the Chin Yi. Oh, now. yeah. And stuff. And the same thing at home when I go out to my little shed. Like it feels like there's too much, so you're not focused? Yeah. I just wonder the way I can integrate the practice better. You know, one way to do it is to work on the Kung Fu or the Shin Yi. So let's say you have a half hour, yeah. for example, and uh, spend 20 minutes working on your Shin Yi, whatever it is you're working on. Yeah. You know, it's a move, the whole sequence, you know, whatever. And then do your Tai Chi, but I would say just up to here. Don't go any past there, right? Yeah. But keep the shiny in your mind right so let's say i was working on this in the shiny yeah. and i'm thinking about that small spiral right yeah. that's what i'm working on for 20 minutes you know whatever and then 10 minutes of tai chi but i'm thinking about my shiny i'm doing my tai chi i'm just doing the beginning of my tai chi i'm not challenging myself with a new move just the part i can kind of do without too much challenge. And guess what I'm thinking of right now? I'm thinking of that. I'm not doing it, I'm thinking yeah. of it. I'm relating them in my head. Like, oh yeah, that's same concept, a little different here, a little, yeah. you know, but the yeah. hands, hands open as the clothes or, or whatever, but like, oh, I can, oh, I was just working on that in Shin Now I'm here, oh, like that's, yeah. Yeah. oh, it's connected in my head. But I'm not lost, if I tried to do that here, like, I'm not even sure about this movie yet. I'm still working. Like, it's not going to help. Okay. Right? So you have a clear idea what you're working on in Kung Fu. And then do the Tai Chi. And you should be able to see it. And it might be the stance. Yeah. It might be, like, you know, that's a little obvious. It might be, you know, the guard. Like, oh, they saw that guard is here, too. It's a little different on this. Or it's exactly the same. Mm. So then you're making, like, mental bridges. See, I've been trying to do, oh, I gotta do the whole form, then I gotta do the whole 10 animals, then I have to do several of the shinny things, and all of a sudden the time is punched sure. in and I'm rushing through. Yeah, well, if it's a time thing, just tell yourself, you know, I don't know if it helps to write it down or whatever, but just say, like, I'm only working on this today. Well, see, I, never I have 15 to minutes. It's part of one. Part of yeah. One. I mean, I wouldn't make that your only touch and practice, yeah. but like, you know, building those mental bridges between things. Because then when you're doing your Tai Chi, I can I can picture, you know, like you're working on this in Shin Yi, right? And then you start doing Tai Chi and you're like, oh, yeah, like in Shin Yi, kind of similar. Oh, that's interesting, you know? It doesn't mean they're the same, or but it's like you're building these bridges. And, and ultimately, that's something that you want to be able to do uh, in Tai Chi is to be able to think. Yeah. yeah. But not the way you describe it. So one of the things that my, my teacher said is that you want to be able to practice your Tai Chi Chuan as a method of practicing another art. This is why it was founded. So, right, right that, that was his case. That's how he understood it and passed it on. He said, you know, in history, the government said, you're not allowed to um, have these weapons. You're not allowed to uh, know how to fight this way. Because, of course, that's a threat to us, the government, right? We want to be the people that can fight this way and have these weapons. So that's illegal, that's illegal, that's illegal. Now, of course, people being people, uh, we're still going to fight away. Yeah. And one of the ways that you do it, besides doing it in secret, you also do it uh, in public or where it might not be as secret as you like, but as disguised, right? So it's not secret in the sense of a room with no sign outside or windows yeah. <laughs> in the dark, which is, you know, secret. You, you do it in a way that it's secreted within something that may be glimpsed or is definitely going to be glimpsed by unknown people or public or certainly governments, right? Snitches or government or whatever. 
and then you um, you either um, are practicing a, a, an art form, right? Like you're carving with a knife, but you're really practicing, uh, you know, you know, sword movements or something, or a dance. You're practicing this uh, ritual celebration dance, right? That uh, tells the story for the people, <laughs> but there's kicks in it and throws or whatever. Um, or I have, um, you know, uh, uh, secret uh, uh, weapons that seem like, you know, it's just a bench I'm sitting on and it's just, uh, you know, the, the lamp that they use or whatever. And so I'm practicing using these things in a way that in fact might really be a celebration of my culture and my history in a way to pass on to the younger generation, the story of our people might actually be that, but I'm also practicing defending against this and, and, and using this and so forth. So it's imperative, Bruce would say, like, I need to be able to do this thing and do it well and do it well and do it well and do it properly, but also do it in a way that, you know, I just kind of picked a move on, but I'm picturing this and this and that throw and that strike like i'm picturing that but anybody seeing me do that says that guy looks like he's doing martial art or are you going to overthrow the government are you going to be uh you know taking down the police like what's your plan and then you know maybe i'm in shackles or something so instead i'm learning to practice oh there's this dance or this choreographed set of uh, movements that tell a story and, and create a celebration and a ritualized, um, you know, exploration of the culture and explication of the culture. But I can't just lose it and have it like literally just become a dance. And I don't know how to do the other things. So I need to be able to practice the art in a way that I can do it and be present in it, but also be present in another practice now this all suggests that i have another practice and i've spent time throwing my jab and working my cross and and pat practicing taking a fall and pulling out a knife and practicing defending against the kick or whatever the martial stuff is so when i'm practicing those things it's a really good thing to spend a bunch of time just you know working on a drill or working on the you know, dealing with elbows for my whole class, like that's what the teachers teach and we're dealing with elbows. And now let me go back to my Taiji Chuan, like where are the elbows or where are the elbow defenses? Like where are they? And are they implicit? Are they ex explicit? Are they not really there, but I'm just choosing to sort of see it there just because I'm in an elbow mindset today. And that's not really wrong. It might not be accurate to the form, but I'm so elbow centric. I just did a whole weekend studying elbows at this camp. Now I see them everywhere. Okay, maybe I don't pass on everything uh, to my Tai Chi Chuan student now. That, that you know, just because I saw them everywhere doesn't mean they are there. But it's still kind of part of the fun adventure of how much can I see in the art that I'm practicing that is unseen. So that's a really like integral part to the art is you know. How do I practice when I'm not allowed to practice? And sometimes you're not allowed because of the laws or the rules or that, or who I'm just going to upset by like I'll practice things in an airport, yeah. But I might I might be allowed to, but it might not be worth and like an upset or concern, inspire concern in somebody else. So how do I practice? It? And I'll just practice it like I'm stretching, you know? right? But I'm thinking like that's an elbow. That's an elbow, oh. but I'm making it. I am doing a stretch, but I'm also trying to make it look like a stretch so that anybody, oh, that guy's got a long flight. You know, good, good for better than sitting there reading the newspaper as he's moving. But I'm practicing these things. So um, the reason that they might need to be disguised is for like a legal or moral or ethical or just uh, concern for your fellow man kind of reasons or guidelines in a particular place. I'm not going to go into a library and start, you know, key eyeing, you know, yeah. that's not going to be, it's, you know, they're going to ask me to leave, but how do I do my practice? So uh, that's one of the things that I'm working on is trying to figure out how to always be practicing what I practice when it's um, um, homogenous 
like all you're doing, you know, the teacher said, okay, all we're doing is dealing with front kicks. Okay, that, that is pretty straightforward. Yes, sir, front kicks all day. But then when I practice my Tai Chi Chuan, where are the front kicks, right? Or the front kick defense or you know, whatever we're yeah. doing in terms of front kicks. And, and where are they, where could they be, but they're not really there? Where are they implicit? Where are they implied? Where are they explicit? Where could I do one, even though it's not in the form, right? And that's the work of the Tai Chi Chuan arts, is to be able to practice their own art while they practice that art. Yeah? Question or? No, it's invaluable. Thank you.